pedal, racing for the bus, or walking across the street for lunch. Yet consider the energy expended by the average person during that walk across the street. This requires effort. And what about the man who has only one leg with which to walk? What are his problems? Where is his energy wasted in the seemingly simple action of crossing a street? Normal gait and common gait deviations of the above knee amputee will be described in the film. The amputee is Mr. William Sobey. The clinic team members commenting in this film include Dr. Frederick Valti, chairman of the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation of the Medical College of Virginia. Normal gait is simply a means of providing the least possible expenditure of energy during locomotion. Any deviation from the normal is accompanied by increased energy requirements, easier fatigability, and less efficiency for the amputee as well as the normal person. One should attempt to analyze gait by observing each section of the limb separately, including the foot and ankle characteristics, the shin, the knee, the pelvis, and finally the trunk and arms. Either ascending or descending order is acceptable, but no attempt to view the limb as a whole should be made until its components have been studied individually. Next, Ms. Hildegard Myers, Chief of Physical Therapy of the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. We have an above-knee amputee who is a skilled walker, is able to handle his prosthesis well under all conditions, and one who is able to simulate many different gait defects seen in an above-knee amputee. His stump is of medium length, he has good range of motion of the hip, and satisfactory muscle strength. As you observe this patient walk, note that the steps are of equal length, the feet remain about equal distance apart in both the swing and stance phases of gait, the knee presents no excessive movement, the pelvis is level, the trunk has no undesirable side-to-side -side or forward and backward movement, and the arms swing equally and easily. Finally, Mr. Blair Hanger, Associate Director and Chief Prosthetist of Prosthetic Orthotic Education, Northwestern University Medical School. The prosthesis which the subject is wearing is an adjustable one. The length can be varied, the alignment of the knee in all planes can be changed easily, and some characteristics about the foot and ankle can be altered. This adjustable prosthesis is used during the dynamic phase of alignment by the prosthetist. The subject now has the prosthesis adjusted to the optimum alignment. The length is correct, the knee is aligned correctly, and the socket angle is proper. There are no defects in the prosthesis at this time. The first gate deviation which you are viewing is lateral bending of the trunk. This defect is characterized by excessive bending of the trunk laterally from the midline. In almost all cases, the bend is to the side of the prosthesis. Usually, the average lower extremity amputee will demonstrate this to a very slight degree. However, that which you see now is considered of sufficient magnitude to be abnormal, and therefore a true gait defect. From the prosthetic point, this can be caused by a prosthesis which is too short. Also, a lateral wall which is improperly shaped can fail to provide adequate support to stabilize the femur. Hence, the gluteus medius cannot do its job of maintaining a level pelvis. Finally, if the medial wall is too high, pressure on the pubic ramus will result, causing the amputee to lean away to minimize discomfort. This is probably one of the most common gait defects seen, and in the absence of the prosthetic causes which you have just heard, can be assumed to be due to habit patterns. If the patient has been permitted to walk before he has developed good balance,
you will lean over the prosthesis for security. In this instance, note that from the pelvis downward, all things are unchanged from the normal. The prosthesis has not been changed. Under these conditions, we can assume that this is truly a habit pattern. Retraining is justified, but the end result must be guarded. An abducted gait is one which is characterized by a very wide base, with the prosthesis held away from the midline of the body at all times. There is little or no knee movement. This may be due to an abduction contracture of the stump or to weakness of the hip extensors so that the patient cannot maintain the knee stable after the swing phase. If he does not bend the knee, he does not have to worry about attempting to lock it for the stance phase. The prosthetic causes for an abducted gait may be a prosthesis which is too long so that the patient cannot get the prosthesis directly under the hip easily or to a medial wall which is so high that it causes pressure on the pubic ramus and resulting pain. This is sometimes referred to as crotch pressure. Failure to shape the lateral wall properly may also contribute to this defect as well as building too much abduction into the socket. The abducted gait is unsightly, but even more important, it alters the patient's normal balance. He is usually insecure and cannot walk rapidly. This gait also renders ascending and descending stairs very difficult. The circumducted gait is characterized by a wide swing laterally by the prosthesis during the swing phase of gait. It is important to note, however, that during the stance phase, the foot returns to a normal position on the supporting surface. This is the key point in differentiating the circumducted gait from the defect which you just saw, the abducted gait. This is a very tiring gait and a very slow one because of the delay necessary for the prosthesis to complete the additional movement through the lateral arc. This gait is not uncommonly due to an amputee who has poor control of the knee, is reluctant to flex it, and hence by swinging the prosthesis laterally can clear the floor without bending the knee. Usually the patient keeps the arm on the amputated side fairly close to the body to maintain a semblance of balance while the leg swings. If the prosthesis is too long, the patient may swing it to the side to clear the foot. Another common prosthetic cause for this gait is a knee which is overly stable, due either to posterior placement or to excessive friction in the knee unit, prohibiting normal swing. This is an excellent demonstration of vaulting. Notice the way in which the weight is held on the anterior portion of the normal foot, the body elevated, and the prosthesis then lifted through. Damage to the normal foot can result, excessive fatigue is common, and the expected walking speed is never achieved. Time is involved in these excessive movements, as well as expenditure of excess energy. It is a very common habit pattern, which may carry over from a patient who has been converted from shoulder harness to pelvic belt or suction suspension. It may be seen, too, in those patients who have poor balance or inadequate voluntary knee control. Elevation of the trunk on the normal forefoot permits the patient to swing the prosthesis through with less than desirable 